All right, 8.15, now we're talking science. Back in my day, my science fair project was about Nolan Ryan's fastball. Mm -hmm. Our guests today are not talking about baseball at all. They are very bright, and they are actually competing this week here at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. Let's say hello first to John Salvador, who's a, you're a junior, right, at the uh, School of Science and Technology. Yes, sir. Nice to have you here. We'll talk to Lisa in just a minute. But you have, well, you've brought a, a blade with you of some kind. Yes, I did. And Read this for me, if you would, John. Tell me what this is. So the title of my project is Tubercle Enhanced Turbine Blades and Their Impact on Performance in Laminar Currents. In layman's terms, I'm a dummy, John. So in layman's terms, what does that mean? So basically, an underwater turbine, which is the study I'm doing, is an underwater windmill. It uses rivers and ocean currents to power it as opposed to wind. And the tubercles I'm applying are these little protuberances to the leading and trailing edge that are designed to improve performance, either in terms of power or in terms of rotation. And this is basically uh, kind of all of your, well, your conclusion, the analysis, everything you've done, and ultimately you came up with what? I ultimately came up with that smaller leading edge protuberances, which are the ones you see here, improve power output while reducing the speed of the blade, which reduces strain and increases power, which means cheaper energy. I get that. Now that makes a lot of sense. So how did you conceive this idea to come up with a project like this? Well, these protuberances are actually adapted from whales, and the idea comes from a marine biologist named Dr. Fish. <laughs> of course. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so he studied whale fins, and he saw that their protuberances aided them in their migrations. I and see. so that aerodynamic edge he then applied to rotors. That's fascinating. You're competing in this, uh, and you're wearing it on your shirt here. This is the ExxonMobil Texas Science and Engineering Fair. Uh, wh what is that all about? How excited are you? I'm super excited. It's the state-level science fair. It's the one above regionals. It's nice and fun to get into. There's tons of really cool projects. Yeah. And it's just fun to see everybody and present. All right. We wish you well. This is fascinating stuff. Hang tight Thank right you. there. Let me go and say hello to Lisa. Lisa Banks is a senior at the John Jay Science and Engineering Academy. Nice to have you as well. And you'll also be there on Thursday at the convention center, yes, right? Definitely. All right. So let's talk about this adolescent perspective on image retention a third year analytical study. Yes, definitely. Well, basically what I did was I took a group of students between the ages of 14 to 19 years of age and I tested their image retention with different uh, criminal suspect scenarios. And basically what I came out was that no matter what um, age group I tested, giving them an incentive made them score um, higher than the group that did not have the incentive to retain the information. And these are all the results that you came up with here? Yes, definitely. Were you surprised by anything that you... Yeah, I was surprised that it took um, a lot of time and effort to get everyone to, to participate. That took, like, the most surprising thing for me. Other than that, um, being able to graph everything also was very surprising because it took a lot of time to input the data and calculate everything. And were you inspired by someone in particular, or do you have, a, like, a education in your background or uh, in your family? Yeah. Dr. Elizabeth Lopez, a graduate student from Stanford University, um, she did a lot of research with that and um, a lot of incentive theories. So I had to right. research about the incentive theories and yeah. a lot of stuff like that. We know about <laughs> extracurricular activities at the high school level, but how competitive do science fairs like this and these competitions, how competitive do they get? It's very competitive. It goes from you know state level, regional state, and then the international level, which is my goal for reaching um, as a senior. You know, That's how you kind of want to end it all, is reaching international. But it goes pretty far from people all over the world, and they get to um, present their projects, so that's what one of my goals is. And I would guess this helps your prospects for college and yeah, even beyond into your career and everything. Definitely, yeah. Well, that is amazing stuff. Thank you, Thank you so much. John, come over here as well and join the family here. <laughs> we wish you all both well, <laughs> and we're you. so proud of all of your uh, accomplishments. I mean, this is just mind-blowing stuff. <laughs> it's like over here for me, but I know it's impressive, and we wish you, you all both all the best, all right? Thank you. Good luck this week. Okay, uh, 819 right now. We're going to step aside. Sean will have the forecast. He's a bit of a scientist himself. <laughs> going to tell us about the weekend weather and rain chances too when we come back, so don't go away.